flat appears to be my position and the subject of today's exhibition. Hello! I would like to welcome you to the Laramie K Optician Works Training Center, where today we are going to cover the steps involved in doing flat transposition. Flat transposition. The tool used for refraction is the phoropter. There's a picture of it. You've seen that before. And strictly by the practitioner's choice, that tool can be ordered to read prescriptions or lens powers in either a plus or a minus cylinder form. It's really just a matter of preference these days. And flat transposition allows us to switch from a minus cylinder form to a plus cylinder form. Now, why do you need to do this? Well, some people are gonna write it this way and some people are gonna write it that. And you need to be consistent. So if everything that happens in your particular store is plus cylinder, then you're gonna to need to convert all of those minus cylinder forms coming in. And of course, vice versa. You wouldn't wanna call in 300, 400 jobs to the lab in plus cylinder form, then one day give them one in minus and then try to figure out why things didn't work out so well. So you do need to know how to do this. Well, let's hit the bench for a second and let me go over where the big picture concept comes from of where those two are. The big picture concept of flat transposition is very, very much the same as the optical cross. So you may recognize this lens from that video. This is a minus five, minus two, meaning that it has minus five and a total power of minus seven. The minus seven is going to be placed at my thickest point on the lens. That is also going to have the steepest curve anywhere found on the lens. My minus five is going to be the thinnest point on the lens, have a slightly shallower curve than that of the minus seven. This lens will never be more powerful than the minus seven or less powerful than the minus five. You can see, you can feel the difference in between these two points, which will always be 90 degrees away from each other. Here's my seven. It is the thickest point I can take my finger quite literally run it down. You can visualize it, feel it, see it, to where my minus five is. From that minus five, I would again start building up in power, in thickness, reducing the radius of curvature till I reached my minus seven. If I have a minus five, minus two, and I write the prescription as a minus five, minus two at 90, that would mean that I had my lens oriented like this, minus five at 90, minus seven over here, two diopters difference, that's where my cylinder would come from. So if I started with my minus five at 90, ended up my seven at 180, my five to here would be minus cylinder, minus five, minus six, minus seven. Simply the exact same lens, same curves, everything else, it just depends on which way I'm gonna write those numbers. If I decided to write it with minus seven at 180, then I would be having a plus cylinder lens going from seven to six to five. Five being less minus or more plus than seven, minus seven is. That's kind of where the big picture concept comes from. Same lens, same powers, same material, same everything. It just depends on where you choose to start writing where your powers are oriented. If you haven't already watched that video on the optical cross, I would strongly urge you to do so. It was the very first video that I ever made, and for some reason I seem to be wearing the same shirt. Now, to switch forms, um, that's the rule. I'm gonna leave that up there for just a second. You can hit pause if you want to write it down or work with it. 
And we're going to go through three examples. Now, I think I have 15 practice examples on the website that are scored under a practice test. I think it's in the eye and lens design, but don't hold me to that. But you've got tons of this. Practice, practice, practice. You've got to get this down. You can't make mistakes when you're doing this. You're going to create a set of garbage lenses, have a very unhappy customer and a very unhappy employer. To convert a minus cylinder form to a plus cylinder form. We're going to follow the rules. We're going to take our sphere and add it to our cylinder. 1.75 using a calculator with the plus minus sign plus 0.75 minus gives me a minus 250. This plus this is this. That is my new sphere power. Now, the next step, according to the rule, is to take your cylinder amount, leave it the value exactly the same, and change the sign from minus to plus. Now we need to change our axis by 90 degrees. That distance that, that travels the lens from the highest point to the lowest point, most power, least power within the lens that I just showed you. And in this case, I can take my 88 and I can add 90 and I end up at 178 for a new axis. 178 does fall between zero and 180 degrees, so we're good to go. My minus cylinder form, written as plus cylinder form, is a minus 250 plus 75 at 178. If I take this lens order written in minus cylinder form and I want to make it plus, I'm gonna follow the rules. I'm gonna take my minus 225 and I'm going to add 1.25 and I end up at minus 350. This is my new sphere power. Take my cylinder amount, keep it the same, change my minus to a plus. This is my new cylinder sign. To keep my axis going from 70, I have to add 90 degrees, 70 plus 90. It's a new one axis of 160. This is between zero and 180 degrees. I'm good to go. My rewritten, it's not new, it's just written in a different way. Minus 225, minus 125 at 70 becomes minus 350 plus 125 at 160 degrees. To go from a plus two minus one to the same exact lens order written in plus cylinder form. I'm going to take my two. I'm going to add one minus one and I end up at plus one. This is my new sphere. I take my cylinder value, keep it exactly the same and change my minus to a plus. Now here's where things get a little bit tricky. If I go 110 plus 90, I end up at 200. 200 does not fall between zero and 180 degrees. That's a big problem because we write our lens orders in those amounts, zero, 180, right? So instead of adding, I need to subtract. 110 minus 90 keeps me within zero, 180, brings me to 20 degrees. That is my new axis. This rewritten in plus cylinder form becomes a plus one, plus one at axis 20. Practice, 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 ah, and use a calculator. And one last one, because I know somebody out there is gonna say, hey, those were all minus cylinder. What happens if you have plus cylinder and I have to go the other way? Well, nothing changes. It is the exact same rule, the exact same process. If I had a minus 350 plus 175 at 30, I would do the exact same thing. I would take my calculator and I would take my minus 350 and add 175. I end up at minus 175. That is my new sphere value. My plus 175 becomes minus 175, my new cylinder sign. My 30, I need to move my axis by 90 degrees. I end up at 120 degrees for my new axis or new position. In other words, where I am writing these lens powers from. My minus 350 
plus 175 at 30 becomes minus 175 minus 175 at 120. And of course, you could work that backwards, forwards, double check yourself, make sure everything makes sense, and you are good to go. Plenty of other examples and practice on the Optician Works website. That is flat transposition. Thank you so much for watching. I do hope you found that helpful. If you did, please hit the like button. Please share this with others. Leave me a comment. And by all means, make sure that every uncut lens in your life comes from Laramie K. I'll see you again next week.